pro-Russian forces today seizing Ukrainian ships in the Crimean port of Sebastopol. Shots fired, but no injuries as the Russians raised their flag, while 20,000 Russian troops and attack helicopters massed across the border. Ukraine's forces, heavily outnumbered, prepared for the worst. Barack Obama responded today with tougher sanctions, this time against Vladimir Putin's banker, his childhood friend and judo partner, and the oligarchs known as the cronies. The world is watching with grave concern as... It was March 2014. Then President Barack Obama announced a new round of sanctions against Russia over it invading Ukraine and seizing Crimea. That round of sanctions targeted government officials and individuals connected to Vladimir Putin, uh, including this fellow. Uh, at the time, he was the head of the lower house of parliament in Russia, but soon thereafter, he was appointed to be the head of Russia's foreign intelligence service, the SVR. Uh, he's still under sanctions by our Treasury Department, which means any assets he has in US, under U.S. jurisdiction are, are frozen. Uh, but this part is particularly important. Quote, transactions by U.S. persons or within the United States involving sanctioned individuals are generally prohibited. Transactions within the U.S. are generally prohibited for anybody on the sanctions list. That means if you're on the sanctions list, you can't come to the United States. Except in this guy's case, he's still on the sanctions list and he was just here. He came to the U.S. last month. We learned he was here because the Russian government started bragging on Twitter about how the head of the SVR just had a great trip to the USA. He what now? Uh, then we learned that he didn't come alone. Uh, the head of the SVR, Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service, who's under sanctions, turns out he came to the U.S. with the head of the FSB, which used to be the KGB, Russia's equivalent of the FBI. While those two intelligence chiefs were here, they reportedly met with our director of national intelligence, Dan Coats, and the CIA director, Mike Pompeo. Then Shane Harris at Washington Post reported that there was actually a third guy here, the head of Russia's military intelligence service, the GRU, lead Russian government agency responsible for attacking our election in 2016. He reportedly also came to Washington at the same time as those other Russian intelligence chiefs. That's what's been reported. I should mention that the GRU guy is also under sanctions. So he's not really allowed to travel to the United States either, which makes it interesting to have it reported that he did travel here. Well, today we got confirmation that the DNI, Dan Coates, did meet with the guy from the SVR and the guy from the FSB in the United States in Washington, D.C. Senator Chuck Schumer had sent a letter to Dan Coates asking him about the meeting with these Russian intelligence chiefs, how the guy who's sanctioned from the SVR got into the United States. Today, Director Coates responded by confirming that meeting. He said the head of the SVR, the sanctioned guy, was admitted into the country in full accordance with applicable U.S. law and policy governing visas and visa waivers, which means that the intelligence community basically made the case to the State Department, hey, it's in our national interest to allow this sanctioned guy into the United States. Please give him a visa. Please give him a, a, a waiver, basically, even though he's sanctioned. That's for the SVR guy. But then there's this continuing mystery about the head of Russia's military intelligence, the guy from the GRU, right? This agency very much behind the meddling in our election. He was reportedly here in the United States at the same time as the other Russian intelligence chiefs. But in his case, we don't know anybody that he met with. We do know that he was named in the most recent rounds of san round of sanctions that President Obama announced before he left office for Russia meddling in our election. That makes sense because his agency was partially responsible for the attack. So he's sanctioned, right? But this is a total mystery as to how he got in the U.S. and she's sanctioned. And if he did get here, who did he meet with, right? His buddies were meeting with the director of national intelligence and the head of the CIA, but no U.S. officials have admitted to meeting with him. So what was he doing here? We reached out to the State Department today to see if they could tell us, since that's the agency that would issue some visa for him, right? Some waiver or clearance since he's a sanctioned individual. Get this. A State Department spokesman answered our queries by referring us to the Russian government. <laughs> what? I mean, the State Department here would have to grant a waiver for a sanctioned individual to enter the United States. The Russian government wouldn't necessarily be able to comment on that since they wouldn't be the ones issuing the waiver. Mystery continues. Did the head of the GRU in fact come to the U.S.? How did he get in? Who did he meet with? We'll let you know if the Russian government gets back to us on that, because that's who the State Department referred us to today. Seriously. <laughs>
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.